Hi guys. Hi guys, it's Kara. And I've been thinking, I've been like racking my brain trying to think of what else to do. Ano pang, because I don't go out, okay? I don't go out a lot. Like my life is not that interesting. <laughs> as much as I like to say that it is. Life is pretty, I don't really do a lot of things. I will be, but like as of now, I have nothing to film. So it's hard for me to think of content. I keep doing like lookbook, but like it's tiring. Every time I finish one, I take like a week, two week break. Because it's hard to like, wait, okay. Because it's hard to like think of enough outfits together. I mean, because like my minimum in like a lookbook is like, 12 outfits sometimes I don't even reach 12 outfits I end up doing like 8 and like I get not I'm not that satisfied just like and it's not like oh no like I could always have hauls you know that's not exactly what I can do all the time anymore <laughs> since basically all I have are like stories and like thoughts and like me talking I want to have like this thing right now where we sit down I wear my comfiest outfit and then I just tell you guys about whatever because I usually have like updates and all but this is like not an update because I don't want to um, I used to do that on my streams, but I don't stream anymore because I get bored every four to six months with what I'm doing. That's why I have to keep doing other things. I have to get interested. Do you guys ever have that problem? I don't know. I feel like I'm the only person I know like that. I don't know anyone who is like that, who could like stay with like a single hobby for like forever. Like the fact that I keep, I upload weekly. If you guys don't know that, or if you're new here, I actually do <laughs> upload weekly. I upload every Friday and Saturday or Saturday Friday or Saturday I upload weekly vlogs I've been doing it for a couple months now sorry I'm trying to burp I just ate and like everything's when a lot of things happen to me I film all of them and then I keep them I I store them I store them until I accumulate like a lot and then I end up saying okay I have to I have to edit so I end up just having uploads every week even if they were filmed like uh, weeks before or a month before so that's why I don't really get bored with it. And like it's always like something new coming out. Uh, what I mean is like, I guess the stream kind of like, cause I kept doing the same things again and again. Like there was really nothing like new about it. So I just couldn't stick to it. And like I hated like, here's the thing, like I, I hated like showing my face. That's so weird. Every time I talk about how like, how like I hate it, I hate showing my face. I feel like a hypocrite because like my whole deal online is that I show my face. My whole deal with this is that I show my face. It took me years, okay? Because I had like a vlog camera and it took me at least two years. Siguro. It took me like a year and a half for me to be okay with editing my face. I mean, editing my videos, seeing my face the whole time. I kind of had to just get over it. It was annoying at first because like I couldn't. Like I, I started vlogging and then I stopped because I was like, I'm so fucking annoyed. But that's probably just me hating myself because yeah, that's just me like being uncomfortable with my face. I guess if I streamed more and like would get over it, I think I would get used to it. But I don't know, like... Because I noticed like my last couple of streams, I didn't want to talk. Like I didn't want to notice anyone. <laughs> Which is so dumb, like why did I stream in the first place? But yeah, so I'm not like stopping. It's just that I'm not in the mood for it. Like I haven't been in the mood for it for a while. Uh, I just, I like doing this though. I like um, vlogging and I like editing. That's fun. Okay, anyway, wh what was I talking about? Oh yeah, I want to do these sit down vlogs where we'll just, you know, you're with me sitting down with me and we'll talk well i'll talk <laughs> i'll talk and then you listen to me if you want to if you don't you can leave that's okay but okay so i only had like four hours of sleep maybe even five i woke up and i couldn't go back to sleep i had a toothache and i took a lot of painkillers and we ran out of painkillers so i had to run to the store i had to wait for the store to open the drugstore to open to get more painkillers and i walked and i was like you know what i'm just gonna i'm not gonna go back to sleep or else i'll fuck up my body clock for real and i'll sleep tonight <sighs> okay so this is yeah i don't know what to say i just wanted to do i know to tell you guys that i want to do this i want to do these sit downs where i'm just here in my desk uh wearing my pajamas I I, am. I wore this to sleep. I wear sweaters to sleep because um, our bed faces the AC, so it gets really, really cold. I get cold really easily, and you know, like I'm, I'm not like prepared. I'm not like vlog prepared or picture ready. Like just this, just my pambahay clothes, my pambahay look, my glasses and all that. I never wear. I don't like wearing glasses in the vlog or like even when I go out and see people, cause like I don't want them to believe this is my actual look. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but I can't fucking see. <laughs> so. 
<laughs> I need my glasses. Also, because these glasses are really heavy, I actually want to get a um, new one. These glasses are really heavy. It hurts my ear. It hurts here because they're heavy. They're big and I can't see. I'm at the point where I can't really use like my laptop without my glasses without getting a headache so yeah anyway so this is gonna be like a new thing right now i think i've done a couple already in like uh my previous uploads where i'm just sitting down and talking to you guys and i feel like that's like the best thing i can do right now because i don't have like proper content i don't go out guys <laughs> i don't go out i don't do anything i like talking i like making content about my life and yeah so this is my first get to know me welcome <laughs> Okay, my name is Cara Lopez. Cara Dominic Cruz Lopez. That's my full name. Please don't do anything with my full name now that you have information on that. Uh, my nickname is Koki. K-U-K-I. I made this cuento in one of my vlogs, but um, that is my nickname at home. My very close friends and the people I live with, my family, they call me Koki. The backstory there is that since it's spelled K-U-K-I, when I was a baby, I used to always look like I'm angry. Like, my eyebrows would knit together. That was my default fate. And that's where Koki came from. It means Kunut Kilai. I don't know how. I wasn't there. I was there but like I wasn't no break. So that stuck ever since. So I respond to that. I respond to Koki to Koks. Okay, that's my nickname. I am 25 years old currently. My birthday is May 17th, 1997. I'm so sad. <laughs> I'm 25 years old. I am Filipino. Pure. Uh, born and raised in Manila. I have naturally black hair and I've dyed my hair so many times. So many times. The first time I dyed my hair, I was 16. I dyed it red. It actually looked orange. My friend called me Mozilla Firefox for that year because it was I had orange hair. Because I dyed it in um I had it dyed in in a in a parlor. So when I did it at home, that's when I got like the red velvet type of red. Because I I remember my first hair dye was manic panic. That was it was it used to be so hard to get online and I had to there was only one store on Instagram. Uh. Excuse me that um, sold Manic Panic. Oh my god! So that was almost 10 years ago. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, uh, I did red a couple of times and then I did the other colors. Uh, right now, I don't use Manic Panic. I use Let's Dye It Manila. Dye my hair and to bleach my hair and anything that has to do with my hair is actually Let's Dye It Manila. Right now, I need to re-dye my hair. My zodiac sign is a Taurus. That's my sun sign. My moon sign is a Virgo. And my rising is a Cancer. <laughs> uh, my favorite music genre is... According to my Spotify, it's pop -up. That That will never Ever changed. No, my number one genre is babang. That genre dominates my library. I like pop. I like, I like, I like pop, uh, pop rock. Alternative. I think classic uh, rock and roll. I don't know. Like everything just leans towards rock. That's my comfort zone, I guess. My favorite movie is Nowhere Boy. It's a biopic. It's a John Lennon biopic of like before the Beatles, like when he was a teenager and all. I love that movie. I could watch that every day. I love um, cartoons as well. I really like Scooby Doo, the movie, the live action one. I love that movie so much. It's so, it's so good. I could watch it every day. Uh, I like a lot of other movies, but I really like old movies. What I'm, when I say old movies, I mean like 70s to 90s or 70s to 2000s. I really like. I'm a very nostalgic person. I really like old things. I like old music. I like old movies. <laughs> My favorite old movie, and damn it. I really like Empire Record. Uh, Dazed and Confused. Oh, my favorite superhero is Spider-Man. When I was five, I went as Spider-Man for my own birthday and Halloween that year. I had the Spider-Man birthday when I was five. And then I went as Spider-Man to my own birthday. Okay, that's, good. that's silly a little bit. Who my favorite Spider-Man is? It's hard. You can't, I don't think you can choose because No Way Home came out and they, it just basically just, you know, like ended the argument like who the best Spider-Man is. There's no such thing. I don't think there's uh, there is like the best Spider-Man. Wala eh. But Toby is close to my heart. Toby Maguire is close to my heart because he was the first and I grew up with him. Uh, when that movie came out, I watched it in the cinemas with my parents. My dad and I were so into it. He got me so much merch and we had DVDs weren't even a thing yet then. We only had the CDs with it with disc one and disc two. And he bought me a CD of the movie and then we watched it. We'd watch it every day. We watched it the day before my birthday. The day before my Spider-Man themed birthday and the day after my Spider-Man Spider-Man themed birthday with all my new Spider-Man merch laying on the bed next to me. 
fucking <laughs> then I remember having Spider-Man light up sneakers and the Spider-Man uh, glow in the dark tea. And I remember feeling so self-conscious in the in the third grade because I had a Spider-Man lunchbox. And my stroller bag was like hanging. And I don't know, I think it was like Barbie or some shit. But my lunchbox was Spider-Man. And then this dude, like this classmate of mine, he's a guy. He was making fun of me and laughing at me because I had a Spider-Man lunchbox. And like, I'm a girl. I was seven when that happened. So if I had that lunchbox for a year. Uh, two years. And I didn't know any better than, okay, I didn't know anything. Because like, if that happened to me, like high school, I would have probably told him that he has, he's not cultured. <laughs> He's not cultured about girls. He doesn't know anything about girls and he has bad taste in anything. Don't laugh at me because of my stupid sp spider man locks. Anyway, that's just me getting defensive. Favorite artist is Taylor Swift. I mean, favorite person is Taylor Swift. <laughs> I love Taylor Swift. I am a hardcore Swifty. I've been a Swifty since I was like 10, 11. She's one of the reasons why I can play the guitar. No, she did not teach me personally, but she might as well have because her songs were the first songs I played in the guitar, the first songs I learned in the guitar. Uh, I've been playing guitar since I was 10. Nine. Well, nine. I learned three chords and then I got serious like two years after. <laughs> I got serious when I was 11. So, because <coughs> my dad taught me three chords. And it's so funny. <laughs> my dad taught me three chords. Taught me how to play Happy Birthday. And I was like, this is so frustrating because I don't, I'm not good at this yet, okay? And then two years after, I picked it up because I was really into like uh, Hannah Montana, the Jonas Brothers, and the Taylor Swift. And like, I really wanted. That was my dream. My dream, my dream was to be like them. I wanted to be like that. I don't know what you call it without sounding annoying. <laughs> but I wanted to be like them. I wanted to be a Disney star. I wanted to be um, I wanted to be a rock star. Whatever. I just wanted to be like them. I was like, I can't do that without a guitar. I gotta have a guitar. It's so cool. It's too cool to, to like ignore it. I can't just sing. I gotta I can't dance. So I gotta have something else, you know? So I picked up the guitar. I had I had um, a classic nylon guitar and it was pink. Pink with flowers on the bottom. It's so pretty. I wish I still had it, but I don't have it anymore. And then I went online since our family computer was in my room. It wasn't even a family computer, it was mine. <laughs> okay, so uh, I learned, I remember uh, learning our song by Taylor Swift at four chords and I taught uh, myself the rest of the chords because my dad taught me the first three and I just picked it up now. And then I played it every single day. I was addicted to like playing. I, I played it before going to school, after school for hours. Not just our song. Like I learned, I, I found out that like most sailors of songs had the same chord. So I would just play like her whole album. And then my fingers hurt. And then I was like, I can't play. So I didn't play for a week and I was miserable because I was so into it. And then when I could finally play it, Nagulat si Daddy, he was like, he was like, what the fuck? No, he wasn't like that, but it was like that. It was, it felt like that for him. He was like, you can play guitar. You're playing. And like he found out that I couldn't drop the guitar at all. I learned how to sing with it and then I really wanted to learn how to write songs with it. And I tried my 11 year old heart and brain tried to write songs but it was so hard for me to do so. It wasn't great. A pro but a proper song at 12 years old. It was about a boy that I liked and I made the song sound like we had a relationship. But <laughs> we did it and I couldn't even use the word love. I didn't even know what love was. I was 12. But like like I remember showing my friends I played it for them and they liked it so much that they asked me to play it all the time and they asked me to write down the lyric and give it to them so that they could memorize it and then when I play it they'd sing it. That was insane. That was one of my first reactions of like a song I composed. I don't even have the lyrics of that song anymore. I probably still have it in my brain. Maybe. I, I can still play it I'm sure but I don't remember it anymore. <laughs> yeah that's how I basically just fell in love with like playing guitar and music because like what's cool is that my dad could play by ear so he can lang yung songs. This was before before I found out that you could find like because sometimes when I like a song the chords of it are not online so I tell my dad to do it until to like look at like um what is this get the chords by ear and then until I started doing that and then I ended up just kind of playing the song within my key or whatever key I found that's kind of normal I guess when you like you kind of don't look for the chords online anymore sometimes you do though you just want to see the chord progression anyway fashion and photography if that's not obvious already I started because both of my parents are like are very into like clothes <laughs> I grew up with like my parents like dressing me up. They were uh, very their fashion sense was so bra. Okay, like like right now I appreciate like their style when they were in their 30s. Was it their 30s or their 40s? Just that like around that era. Like um, I, I love their style and I hated it as a kid because like when are you are we in the store? We've been in the store for three hours. Why are we still here? But like I do that now. <laughs> okay, so my parents um, they're very they love like what I do now. Like basically what's really in now. Like when you're into aesthetic, you buy or yeah you 
purchase or consume every everything related to that. That's basically what my parents were before. Like they were really in like Woodstock 70s and uh, Western type, like uh, like cowboy type style. I don't know. Uh, Cause our house was themed that way. They're into like uh, denim jackets, denim shirts, flannels. Denim. Levi's was a deal in the house. I realized that Levi's was a deal at all. I thought my parents were just kooky. Like we, like every five years, I guess maybe every five, three to five years, we had to get a denim jacket. The family had to ha get like a matching denim jacket. And I was like, that's so unnecessary. <laughs> like I was a kid. I was a kid. Okay, I was I was a tiny baby child going. Why the hell are we in the Levi's store? And I didn't know it was a big deal until like I grew up and I didn't have a denim jacket. The parents weren't together, so I guess my dad just kind of because my mom was the one shopping for clothes, like she just kind of she was like obsessed with it. Same, like I am like that right now. And my dad kind of assumed that he assumed that I had a denim jacket or I still had it. I don't know that the last denim jacket I had probably when I was like 13 and I was already I was 19 or 20, 21. Oh no, I was 19. Yeah, I was 19. And then he asked me, Wear a whole denim fit because because we were going to the States and he was like, Wear a whole denim outfit, denim jacket, denim and boots because we were playing business class to LA. And then I was like, I don't have a denim jacket. <laughs> and then he was like, what? Like, he was so offended. Like, he was so angry that I did add him. And I was like, what a big deal. So when we got to the States, he got me a denim from Levi's and then a denim jacket. Like, he was the one picking it out. Like, I didn't even want it. I wanted a band shirt from Zoomies. <laughs> oh no, I wanted a band shirt from Hot Topic and I wanted an Odd Future shirt from Zoomies. Like, you're not gonna <laughs> tell me anything. And then we, he, like, like, he literally dragged me, but he basically did. He took me to, like, a department store. I don't know where. He took me to a Levi's and then he was making me pick. Like, how does this, how does this fit? How does this fit? And I was like, I was just like, just get one of them, I'm fine. And it was a pretty good deal. I think it was an outlet store because we got a denim jacket box. That's a pretty good deal for Levi's. I can't get it right. And then I didn't realize it was a big deal at all. Yeah. So I got, uh, my parents used to dress me up in like the cutest clothes as well growing up when I was a kid. Like I see them now. I mean the pictures of myself as a kid and then I'm like, that's a, that's a nice fit. I'd wear that again. Like, you know, trendy, really trendy. And then with photos, I think my mom, like as much as I hate my mom, I have to give her credit for like, my interests because she got me into like photography. She didn't get me into photography. Like she didn't she didn't like force hair. But I was her designated photographer as a child. I was like 10 like that around that age. And she she always had a camera. I remember always going with her to like Kodak to have her photos developed and they always took so long. I remember that. I remember that really stuck with me. I guess because like what really stuck with me was that she'd ask me to be the one to take pictures of her and her friends or her or like her and other people. Because sometimes she would have other people take it and it would look bad. And then when she when she told me to do it, I somehow did it right. I didn't know how. I was just like, okay, I'm gonna center them. They're gonna be in the center of the photo and it's gonna be focused or some shit. I don't know. It was a film camera. That's how we all started. I remember I, I went with my mom, have her photos developed, and then she was like, did you you took all of these right? And I was like, I guess. And she was like, you're so good. And then since then, ano na naging designated photographer na ako whenever she'd go anywhere and I was with her. And it got annoying. <laughs> it got so annoying because like I'd be laying with my cousin and then she pulled me out just to take a picture with that I'm not even in but it's okay when she got a digital camera and she got a handy cam and she got a digital camera I was still the person taking pictures because I was 12 years old and there was a thing called site models obviously they're now called influencers <laughs> they were called site models like they were like really pretty scene kids like really pretty scene girls or like more girls you know that era I was 12 okay and like they took pictures of their outfits I remember googling how to become one and then one thing really stuck with me which was make sure each picture you post is different. like make sure it's a different out different this and that, that and I remember putting together a fit and taking a picture and shit I could do this every day and I did. I was 12 years old I did. Instagram wasn't even there yet but I had like Facebook <laughs> and I would post like different outfits and different pictures and, and people were like getting that and I started getting into like taking pictures of people because Tumblr was a thing and taking pictures uh, so my mom spotted like my eye for that and I basically just took it and I just started taking pictures in general so I have never called myself a photographer even if I've had like a I've shot like a couple of who were my friends as well. And the photos turned out really good. I just never gave myself credit for that. I have a problem. I was a kid who was obsessed with stationery. Before I had the obsession with clothes, I was obsessed with paper, stationery, notebooks, journal. I'd spend, I'd spend, I'd spend on that. Like I'd go insane. I'm a Taurus. I like collecting shit. I like consuming material things. It's my favorite thing. It fulfills me. I, I love doing that. So I guess now it's clothes. It used to be journals. I still kind of get like um, like the feeling whenever I'd see like really cute stationery. I used to collect Hello Kitty notebooks and paper. And my best friend Kat would, uh, no, she was a witness to this because like I, she was my classmate in first grade and she saw that I had the cutest stationery. I had like collection. Okay, anyway, now I'm and it's a little bad but it's okay. 
I kind of so a part of me kind of wants to collect stationery like that again, but I have no place to put. Or like I feel guilty. I don't know. Like my mom made me feel guilty for like consuming things as a kid. But like that, I really like shopping. Eh. Yeah, low key dream job ko is to be a personal shopper <laughs> of like a celebrity or something. Like I would. Like I do that. Like tell me how. Like what do you need? What do you need? Do you need new clothes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll 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 go to like the nearest Forever 21, get every trendy shit out there. Just give me your card. <laughs> like I do that. I do that happily. It doesn't even have to be mine. That's why I kind of like going with people who want to go shopping. Like I don't have. I like seeing them buy it. It's, it's weird. It's weird. There's something in my brain. There's something in my brain that makes me go. This feels nice. That's why I like watching malls. I like watching people go shopping online. It's just it's the same impact. Oh, there's something wrong. Okay. I'm passionate about. I really like writing. I've been told that I write well. I really like writing. Um, cause I really like talking. I really like expressing and like giving descriptive. I, I like I like writing. I really like writing anything. Uh, songs and poetry. Um, I really like writing songs though. They're, it's cathartic for me. And I don't know. Like I've tried. I used to like want to be an artist, like like an illustrator or like somebody who draws in a way. But passion I want for that is how I am with writing. Like writing for me just it's just normal. It's like breathing to talk about something, explain something. It's just normal for me. Like it comes out. So that's my passion. My passion is also music. That's it. What is on your bucket? list. New York. New York is in my bucket list. New York is in my bucket list. Taylor Swift concert also. I mean a lot more probably but like those are like the big dream. To meet Taylor. What is your favorite holiday? Before it used to be Christmas but Christmas makes me sad now. I really like Halloween. Halloween's not a holiday <laughs> but I think it should. Halloween is it feels like Christmas. It feels like what it feels like what Christmas used to feel like now when Halloween now when Halloween's just around the corner and you feel it. It's because everyone because like Christmas it can only be celebrated by like a specific like group of people. I don't know, like families and, and children. Like they would enjoy Chris, you know? But everybody enjoys Halloween. Everybody enjoys Halloween. Like no, nobody gets bored during that holiday. Even if you're not wearing a costume, you'd still get thrilled with like people. Cause like you never know who you're gonna see. You're gonna see a ghost, a zombie, or Woody from Toy Story. You're never gonna know what people are gonna wear. And Christmas is the same, like every year. It's the same. They put up the same decorations. I always say this, but I wish I was good. I wish I knew how to fence. If there's a that I wish I knew how to play, it's fencing and baseball. <laughs> Two very different words, but oh my god, fencing. I swear to god, in another life, I'm a champion fencer, whatever you call it. Um, what is the coolest place you travel? I don't know. I don't know what the coolest would be. New York? I went to New York as a kid. I was 11 years old. Uh, insane. I was insane. But I couldn't appreciate it because I'm 11. You know, like big city, big building. I'm tired. Let's go home. <laughs> but like now, holy shit. Yeah, okay. My longest running friendship is with Kat, my best friend. I met her when I was seven and we were really close then. And then she went to another school. So we separated for a couple of years. We reconnected again in high school. And then we re-reconnected her first year of college. And then we were inseparable. We're inseparable now. And we were inseparable ever since. So that's my longest running friendship. So I've known her since I was seven. And in two years, that'll be 20. That will, oh my god, in two years, that would be 20 years ago. That's insane. That's a person. That's a whole ass adult. But what I really like about myself and what, what I hear mostly when people uh, describe me is that I'm very descriptive. I'm a good storyteller. The way I could paint a picture for for you with my words. The way I can explain something. The way I can tell a story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really like that about myself because I get a lot, a lot of compliments on like my writing and me being that way. I get a lot of compliments. Not compliments. They're more like observations. Like, you know what? You're really passionate, blah, 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 and all that. And I, I like that because like it's something that I didn't notice would be like a big deal to me, I think. I didn't notice it would be a big deal to anyone at all. And the only reason why I'm like this is because of my dad. Because when, okay, because my dad and I used to go out uh, and you know, as a teenager, we go out, I'd wear my earphones and I'd listen to music in the car and he hated that. He hated that nobody was replying to him <laughs> in the car when he would talk. He'd tell me to take it off and then I'd talk to him. I'd humor him and then it was always like that when he'd pick me up from school. Sometimes when you're a teenager, you don't really want to talk to anyone, I guess, that are not your friends. You're like adult. And he hated and I would, he'd be like, how was school? And I'd be like, it was fine. And what did you do today? And I'd be like, you know, normal, same thing. And then he hated that because it's like, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. Something interesting would have happened today. And he'd always tell me, paint a picture. Paint a picture for me as if I'm there. He used to say that all the time. Every single time, no fail. Until like, I literally like tell him, I describe him like the classroom, I describe him all my class. He was genuinely interested. I think this is a, this is like a good part of his pairing. Like he was genuinely interested in my life. He was listening to it as if watching
watching a movie. I think that's what he likes. My dad really likes movies, by the way. So I describe everything to him until like I noticed I would start like observing my whole day and pocketing stories from that day so that I could tell my dad afterwards. My dad and I were very, very, very close. He was my best friend. Until I, I wouldn't like, the only time I'd literally like put earphones on <laughs> is when I was alone. Never when I'm with other people. Because that's rude <laughs> in the car, you know? I, I got that. I got that with my dad. Uh, tell each other everything. I tell him everything. He knew everything about my life. It was insane. Like, this is my dad and he's interested about like my friends who he's never met. He's just interested. Like, the things that get me excited, he gets excited then. And, and like, wala. Parang dun ako naging open kay dad. Yeah, that's how I got into like storytelling. Um, I am an orphan. <laughs> no, uh, I'm an only child-ish. Ish. Because I have family but like, uh, we're no longer in speaking terms. Uh, my mom. Okay, this is like a, no, this is my, my personal life. Talaga. My mom left me when I was 16. It was a really bad like, breakaway. Uh, we don't have a good relationship. We haven't spoken since. We haven't spoken properly since. Uh, at all. She doesn't come to see me or call me at all. We don't. We have no communication. I know where she lives though. I don't know if she cares about me or if she knows where I live. I don't know. Or if she even knows I do this. Uh, she hasn't reached out like in a motherly way. Not in a way that she wants to uh, like mend our relationship or anything. So that's, I don't know. That's established. I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't live with my mother or I don't have any connection with her. Um, my dad was my best friend and he was the only reason why I love living <laughs> because of him. Um, but he died in September 10, 2019. It was a pretty bad year for us. Uh, he lost his job and I lost my job same year and we were getting kicked out of the house. Died of an aneurysm. I came from a job interview. I interviewed at QC super far and then I was so excited. I was so excited. He brought me to where I could get a better ride to go to QC because he couldn't drive me all the way to QC because he was doing other things that day. And we just moved in like two days ago to this new house. Smaller house. Uh, he drove me to where I could get a grab. And then the last thing uh, we told each other before we separated was I love you. I never leave him even a night like without saying I love you. I'll, I'm always that kind. Just in case. I'm always a god. I'm always the just in case. Just in case. You know. So I was out the whole day. And then after the interview, I remember texting him. I was like, I'm so excited. I can't wait to tell you. I'll tell you everything when I get to like, okay. When I got home at around 7 to 8. Uh, this is tough to talk about uh, again. <laughs> okay. I uh, Nobody else was at home. It was just him. And the lights in the living room were on. It usually was like that even in the old houses. And I called him saying, dad. Dad. And nobody was responding. And this was the first time that nobody was responding with me knowing that my dad was there. And entering the house, there's a screen door. And half of the screen door is another... Uh, uh, well, you could see inside the house. I saw my dog sitting. It was just there. But when I opened the door, I saw my dad's body on the floor. Lifeless. The thing is, I did, the thing is, when things like that happen to you, or when they happen to you for the first time, you don't process it as real. So you're kind of confused. You watch movies and you watch TV shows and you panic and you give these characters advice and like, run, call the police, do this and that. You know, like, where's your sense of urgency? But when you're there, you're, everything you've ever known leaves your brain. You have no idea what, you know, like my dad taught me where to, get my passport renewed or to get government ID. He taught me how to complain at like at like a customer service desk when they're taking too long. He taught me how to order food. He thought, taught me how to do that. He taught me how to do all of those things. But parents do not teach you or prepare you for when something like this happens. For when emergencies happen. Like this. Even if you physically know what to do, you don't emotionally know how to go through that thing. So, I saw my dad but uh, face first sa floor. I had no thoughts. I knew that I kept yelling dad question mark over and over because my mouth didn't know what to do. Your body doesn't really know how to react. I did not know how to react. But as soon as I saw his gray hands and blood coming from his mouth, I knew, okay? I knew already. I knew it. My whole life, my whole new life flashed before my eyes that tomorrow, I have a different life now. Tomorrow, everything with my dad would be yesterday's. Amidst the panic, I didn't cry. I didn't cry until the ambulance right, heading to the hospital. I mean, obviously they tried to revive him, but I knew. I, I, knew. I knew. And I felt like I was was so small and so young and so clueless like when that was all happening it's like every strength all the courage i've ever mustered dissipated they were just non-existent that like i was stripped down to size i was cut out size and stripped down to like vulnerability like naked completely like i am helpless that's all i can say like to describe that moment of my life it's it was there's nothing i've never gone through anything worse than that like how you get like every single thing i was doing until that point was for my dad he was like the only reason why things were good for me like
like anything bad could happen but it wouldn't be bad lang kasi dyan naman si dad like I'd always come home to my father like there was always somebody who I'd come home to who loved me no matter what happened you know I had that safety net with my dad not financially we were also in a really bad rut but like I had that safety net that like I was gonna be loved forever and I remember how it felt like how it felt like such a betrayal I was so angry at the universe I was so angry at every single thing I've ever believed I was angry at God I was angry at everything because it was like it was such an eye opener for me that nobody's safe from like anything bad happen like even if you think I was 22 years I didn't have a mom anymore I only had him I was 22 I didn't have a house to my name I didn't have money I didn't go to college I didn't have a job and I thought that was pretty bad already and if the universe couldn't even feel bad and took the only thing I had left with then nobody is safe you truly have to save yourself if, if you're the if you feel bad for yourself for having that type of life you're the only person who feels bad for yourself because nobody's gonna save you that's what I felt and I don't know I lost so much and I'm still recovering I'm still recovering from that though I am doing better because I'm learning that I the life I live now is completely like without my father I don't know if that makes sense to people who have lost like love it's weird when you find yourself living a life that your dad I live a life that my dad would never recognize my dad like if I met if I if I died and I met my dad he wouldn't know what the fuck COVID is <laughs> he wouldn't know that the world went like a block down and he wouldn't know that I had a Harry Potter face he wouldn't know that I went blonde he wouldn't know that I worked from home he wouldn't know that he so many things have happened since he died that I've turned into this completely different person I, I'm a complete stranger now to what my dad and that's weird for me at first I was so guilty because I was like I'm somebody my dad doesn't know my dad doesn't recognize and I feel really guilty for living a life without but I don't think he'd want that's when I realized I have to stop living for the dead and start living for who's alive which is me I gotta start living a life that I want to live I don't have to pay tribute anymore I think if anything I was the only person who ever like showed that I loved my dad everybody else by the end betrayed him and I was the last person <laughs> say that I loved him before he left it's freaky cuz like I remember like weeks before he died he would go okay cooks you know how to do this you know how to do this right you know how to do this and that and that and that and that and that you can do this you can do this and like he was basically like leaving me to do things it's like he knew for some reason that was just freaky to me cuz like that's an aneurysm how would you know <laughs> diba anyway and then I remember because my friends were like helping me out selling all my stuff and then they were telling me like you have good you're in good hands it's freaky to me now like because like you knew you were gonna die no I would have not wanted to know anyway I, I don't cry about it anymore unless it's like it hits me hard that I haven't heard his voice like that or like when I hear his voice in like a video again like that like it hits me then but I can talk about it now it's fine it's just it's just kind of weird for me to have that story like in my life like I have a horrible story of like me losing like my soulmate my dad was one of my soulmates I believe he was my other half he was my best friend and there are gaps in me that cannot be filled anymore because it was just we were like a, he was my best friend on a level that I can't really replace I can't really replace him not just because he's my dad but like he knew me in a way we knew each other in a way and like I can't find it you know I've tried though I've tried I've tried looking for like people who I can connect with in this level but they're just parts my dad was like the whole thing like my favorite thing to do with him my favorite two favorite things to do with him was I really like people watching we'd sit in the car and we would park in like a grocery store parking lot after grocery shopping and we'd like watch people and like create lives from them <laughs> For them, I mean, like we just laugh and like pretend, you know. That was fun. That was always fun. And the second thing I loved doing with him was watching movies, talking about it. I love doing that. I don't get to do that much now. Like it's kind of hard to look for somebody who's gonna, I don't know, who just enjoys it, but also has like a million thoughts about it, and also entertains your thought about it, and like understands the way where it's coming from with you. Like there's still like things right now that I wish my dad could have, like, and I wish I could tell him because he'd be the only one to get it. I don't know. I talked about my dad again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um i'm 25 i don't live alone but uh i've been like fighting it's hard not to have i know it's hard to be mentally stable with everything that happened to me and it's hard to like okay with it it's hard to act like it didn't happen because those things traumatize losing my dad traumatized like i'm not even using that word lightly like it, i did like uh i still get stunned right now when i see lifeless bodies on the floor <laughs> uh when people freak out in a way i still get triggered i shake uh, it's just uh, just a lot of like things that are relative to that time in my life trigger me that i mean i don't know if i'm making sense but uh, yun. favorites my favorite color is it used to be red but i think now purple and pink it, it's gotta be either of the two because when i get something i usually always get pink or purple of it I really like those colors it used to be red i don't know why it's not anymore my favorite food is everything but i have acid reflux but my favorite filipino food ah oh, dami i like sinigang one i really like 
like Kare Kare also. I love Kare Kare. So funny because like I only developed that love like a couple years ago. But I love Kare Kare so much. Favorite food? Mada. Favorite fast food? Wait lang. Yeah. Favorite fast food? <laughs> Alam mo, wala akong favorite kasi nadami akong gusto. I like a lot. Eh. I have a I have a sweet tooth though. I I love sweets. I love ice cream and uh cookies and brownies and cake and croissants <laughs> and donuts. Okay, I think that's it. Like I can't think of anything else. Anyway, that's my get to know me.